Breaking tonight, a federal appeals court has ruled that the religious and free speech rights of a high school football coach in Washington state were not violated when the school district told him he could no longer kneel in prayer at the 50-yard line after games. Discuss the ramifications of today's ruling with the New York Times best-selling author, radio host, and his brand new book, Fish Out of Water, is out now. Eric Metaxas, welcome back. Good to see you. Thank you for having me. I'm psyched to talk about all this stuff, Sharon. I'm fired up. Did I just call okay, you Sharon? So you did, but I figured because we're such good friends, you're doing it to kind of troll me a little bit. So I'm going to let it go. Um, that's but that's you know right. What my name is that's thank you. OK, let's let's talk about this ruling, because listen, Coach Kennedy has been this has been going on for years. It went to the Supreme Court, didn't get picked up there. But this is what they said in, in 2019. The Supreme Court, according to Reuters, reporting on it, then refused to hear Kennedy's appeal from the Ninth Circuit before conservative justices Alito, Thomas, Gorsuch and Kavanaugh all wrote that they might need to revisit this in the future. Um, his legal team says that's where they're taking this. What do you think the odds are? Honestly, I think they have to take it, and I think they, they have to set a precedent at the highest court um, that we have been treating the Establishment Clause like it says we need to have a secular public square. That's completely wrong. It's antithetical to the founders' vision. It's not something that they wanted in the Constitution. So the Establishment Clause is simply the idea that our government cannot force people to become Methodists or Jewish or Buddhist. That's what the Establishment Clause is. The idea of being able to live out your faith is protected. And this is a classic case of someone living out his faith. And I really think it becomes a judgment call. It's, it's silly to me when somebody says, well, you can't do that. People do all kinds of things you might not agree with. The idea that the school would say, you can't do that, you mustn't do that, that, that to me really is a Absurd. Most Americans would think that's the greatest thing. What an amazing thing it would be to have a guy like that as the coach of these kids who really need a strong role models who are who are living out their lives saying, I want to be a good person. I want to be a person who prays, who believes in God. Most Americans think that's great for teenagers. So to me, it, it just rises to the level of absurdity. And it's sort of an enforced secularism. Well, we have not stopped tracking this case for years, so we're going to continue to see as it winds its way through. And I do think it's time for the Supreme Court to rule on it. I don't know what they'll do, but uh, to get involved with this because it is something that is woven into so many people's lives. Now, you and I got to know each other years ago because I was such a big fan of your book, Bonhoeffer, which I still to this day think is one of the best books ever written. Um, and it really moved me. And listen, I'm not a writer like you, but you inspired me to, to Under the give, makeup, uh, I'm blushing. Try myself. <laughs> Listen, I, you know, I think it's a fantastic book, very inspiring. Um, so I've written a book and you have been kind enough now to uh, check out my book. And um, you and I have talked a little bit about First of all, I congratulations. This in, I know it's, it's thank you. It's not a small thing to write a book. It's congratulations. Terrific. And yes, I, I, I was recently reading the chapter uh, on Jesus and the women, which is so mm -hmm. countercultural. It's amazing. But go ahead. You were going to you're the host. Yeah, well, I was going to say, uh, people have to think our times were so different than their times where women in a lot of places were not permitted to study or to be with a religious teacher. Jesus kind of broke all the norms back then. That's why I wanted to include these stories here. Um, a little quote from the book, it says, he didn't shy away from sinners or women with no status. In fact, he walked right into their stories and into their lives in a way that not only offered them hope centuries ago, but also provides encouragement and inspiration for us today. I mean, he went to people, uh, the woman accused of adultery, the Samaritan woman at the well. I mean, he, he didn't shy away from uh, men and women who were on the fringes or considered outcasts of society. And I love that because the message to me today is that um, he's there waiting for all of us. We don't have to clean up our act and then go to him. And I wanted to include um, these flawed people in the book because we're all flawed. Well, the, it, it, it is amazing to me how progressive, to use that word, Jesus was and the Christian faith is. We forget that, uh, just as you said, in those days, a man, a rabbi, would never talk to a woman like that. So this was a big deal that he did that. And he's basically saying, this is how we need to do this. We, we've got to stop this kind of, you know, w way that we behave. We've got to love 
everyone, but it was a big deal. We forget what a big deal it was. And I always like to think about when the women were the ones to find that he had risen from the dead. I mean, if somebody mm -hmm. wanted to make up the gospels and prove that Jesus rose from the dead, the last thing you would do is choose women because they were looked down on. They weren't taken mm -hmm. very seriously uh, from, a, from a, a, a court point of view. Their, their testimony in court was not worth what a man's was. So there are many, many cases in the gospels of Jesus behaving toward women in ways that look kind of normal to us, but they were absolutely right. scandalous uh, and, uh, yeah. you know, earth shattering in, at his time. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And um, again, Bonhoeffer, one of the best books I've ever read. Eric, thank you for being on tonight. Always great to see you. Congratulations again. Well done.